The deposit's in on that 136, so we're good to go to survey on the 21st, my man. So I'll sign that tonight, and then uh, I, I left a message at Rossioli for 10 o'clock for the haul out on the 21st, and we should be good. Did you already sign it? I, got one, I just got one in from you, it fully executed. All right, then that means Carrie signed it, so yeah. Carrie's on top of the ball, baby. All right, cool. I want to tell you about this listing I got, this 101 Leopard. Uh, it's going to be in the show, 2007. Figured you might have a buyer. You're one of the guys that works for us that might. I've only got about 200 grand so far in receipts, but it, it's something like 500. We did, you know, garage hydraulic rams were all replaced. They soda blasted the bottom down to absolutely nothing and, and did a full bottom job. Um, triple jet, Rolls Royce jets. She's got 20. 500-ish hours. They did the 2,000-hour service this year. The port drive was overhauled back in 18. I got all the records for that. They spent like 140 grand or something like that. The, the, the previous owner did all that. And when these guys bought it, they put quite a bit in. I mean, the electronics are all updated. It's the original screens, but all the brains and the radar itself is new. How much you asking for this thing? Just under 2.5. This boat was built to be a sexy looking fast boat in the med. And inadvertently, they've delivered the perfect boat to Miami. Super shallow draft to get into under four feet of water. So within a matter of hours, we've got the speed to get wherever we want into super tight, really shallow anchorages. Most 100 foot boats are not gonna be capable of doing that. The jet drives, coupled with how this boat's put together and designed, make it perfect and still huge. When you step in this boat, you step into one of the most elegant and beautiful modern interiors that you're gonna find on a yacht, especially from one built in 2007. It's Miami, to a T. We're gonna begin today here on the swim platform. This area received a tremendous amount of attention from the current owners, mainly to get the jet ski that was here out of the way, which freed up all the clutter so you have a usable swim platform. And the owners of this yacht spent quite a bit of time and money redesigning the layout so we could fit two jet skis in here because we were told initially that we couldn't. And we found a way to do it and still keep it really tidy and really accessible. So our jet skis down here are hooked up to a harness, lifted up by the passerelle, which is now our davit. Telescopes out. And drop the jet skis right in the water and it makes it super easy. There's other nice features back here, like this shower. So when you come out of the water, you don't have a typical handheld that you have to sit there and spray yourself with, because we are on a super yacht, so it's really nice to have a legit shower. So we're gonna leave the swim platform and head up port or starboard to check out this cockpit. And it's an impressive cockpit. As we head up, take note of the attention to detail and the pride that Leopard put into this yacht. They got their logos on all the cleats and you're gonna see that as a common theme throughout the boat as we go on today's tour. As we take a step up here onto the aft deck of Castanilla, we got anything but a traditional 100 foot layout back here. You got nice shade overhead and a huge sun pad, which by the way, all the cushions on board this yacht are brand new as of this year. Tons of storage below, so all the covers and everything can get stored nicely. And you lead forward and you reach the outdoor dining area, which you're gonna probably use most when it comes to your dining experiences. Before we head inside, we're gonna walk around the side decks and check out the other outdoor space. The current owners usually find themselves here most, and I think when you see it, you're gonna understand why. In 2021, the current owners put this yacht through almost a full refit, and there's a ton of stuff that we can talk about. If you'd like more information on this, please call me or email me. I'm happy to send you a complete breakdown. As we continue, you might be wondering, how do we store all the toys since we put those jet skis in the garage? 
you've got a ladder that gives you access up to your radars, your satellite domes, all that good stuff, but there's also a davit found here. So all the paddle boards and kayaks that you think you might not be able to put in that garage can get stored here easily. We're gonna step inside and see what makes this yacht incredible. When you take a look around in a singular room to find this amount of volume is impressive. One thing that Leopard did really well was that you don't break line of sight with the sea surrounding you. So as I walk forward, look around, I always am connected to the elements outside and that's super important when you're on board a yacht. This area is ultra configurable. So this table right here easily folds away stores underneath one of the sofas, and now you have a cocktail lounge. When this yacht was constructed, you had two options. You can either have the bar that you see behind me or a dining table. And frankly, I really like having the bar option. Not only is it a great place to conceal the TV, but it gives you a ton of functionality. I've got a fridge back here, I've got an ice maker, a sink, everything I need for the serviceability that you would lose if you did not have this here. And you already saw the dining table behind you. We're gonna check out this helm area next. A normal helm area when it comes to navigation and ship systems and being able to see all the things going on with the yacht while you're underway. But it's much more than that. I mean, this is about speed. This is about going fast and enjoying that ride. Close to $40,000 went into getting new Furuno navigation as well as new communications domes. For a full breakdown on this list, feel free to email me anytime. So there's something just special about this yacht. It's not just the speed, it's not just the sexy look, it's the volume that you find inside of this thing. This boat is huge inside, and the master stateroom is no exception. I'm 5'9", maybe on a good day 5'10", and if I reach up, I can barely touch the ceiling, so I've got almost seven foot of headroom throughout the entire boat. Its volume really is amplified by these white acrylic interiors, you get a full king size berth. And you've got an awesome workspace. Maybe hit up that Zoom meeting, because let's face it, everybody that owns one of these has to afford to fill it up, so you really can't stop working. And this is a great spot to do that, stress-free. And I've got tons of natural light that pours in through all of these portholes, which by the way, were replaced this year. So everything's crystal clear. Also have three closets in this boat. So you've got tons of storage for all the weekend getaways. From the closets here, we're gonna walk around the berth over here to the port side and check out the master head. And this stunning mosaic shower is without question the highlight. From here, let's roll forward and check out the other three cabins. First, we pass the day head, and that's here on the starboard side. It's connected to the first cabin that we come to. In this room, it was outfitted with side-by-side -side berths facing aft with a handy Pullman for guest overflow. Adjacent to the port side is a mirror configuration with a full-size berth in lieu of the side-by-sides, making it great for a couple. If you're into sleeping in darkness, well guess what, you're in luck. With the push of a button, like upstairs, these electric blinds drop and give you total seclusion and it makes it super easy to sleep. Trust me, I've slept on board this yacht and it's incredibly comfortable. Just aft, you'll find its private head. Continuing forward, we're gonna enter in through the companionway to the VIP. 
The simple elegance of this decor package is a huge standout for me. At the time, this was all about taking risk and breaking boundaries, which not only helps eliminate the cave-like feeling you get from most yachts that compare, but it's also super easy to take care of when it comes to cleaning or if it's ever damaged. This features an aft-facing centerline queen. Flanking the port and starboard is a split head configuration which maximizes the space and allows for multiple users. From here, let's run up aft through the salon down the port side staircase to the crew quarters and galley. This will also take us to the heart of the yacht, her engine room, and we're going to check that out last on today's tour. Coming down these stairs brings us to the crew quarters and galley. Let's go forward and check out the galley area first. Here we find three stainless steel paneled Hobart refrigerators. There's also three freezers located just below. A Miele stainless steel paneled professional dishwasher, Gaganal stainless steel oven, and a Miele six burner ceramic cooktop. There's also a convenient exhaust fan hood overhead. This area has been outfitted with LED lighting for excellent visibility. Just after that, we have a crew mess, and on a yacht like this, it's really nice for a crew to have space to kick back and relax after a long day's work. The crew accommodations. There's a total of two rooms, both capable of sleeping two crew, and they're both outfitted with their own private heads. Before we get to the engine room, you'll see a stacked Miele washer dryer, and then a watertight door that takes us in to the engine room. We've got three MTUs at 1800 horsepower apiece. There's also water makers, a sewage treatment plant, two generators, and tons of space, so working on anything that goes wrong or any kind of service is a breeze. All three of the boats I have in the show are gonna, are gonna do well, I think. That, that Leopard should do extremely well. Yeah, it'll probably sell. Yeah, I'm pretty confident it will. I mean, you got fast speeds, you got shallow draft, the boat's really dialed in. All right, man, I'll give you a shout later on. I just want to say what's up, tell you about a couple things. Okay. Um, so I have trying to think if I have something else for you. Uh, I don't. All right, bud. 